Originally, this was supposed to be about the TBS Championship. How some people are calling it a prospect championship because of who has been facing for the belt and the one woman holding the title. The TBS Champion currently, Jade Cargill. Originally, this was supposed to be covering how this whole title was meant originally to be a proper second championship for the women's division. I was going to cover how it clearly was meant to be that based on the multiple world champions that had been put into it, the multiple women who had been in the business for a long time, had earned their reputations, had earned their names, because it was a 12-woman tournament and most of them had history in the professional wrestling world. I could have covered literally all of them, from Thunder Rosa to Nyla Rose to Hikaru Shida, Serena Deeb, The Bunny, how multiple titles had been held between all of them. But then I started looking into it and see how Jade Cargill had been booked in order to show that it's more so that they just don't book Jade all that right. But then I started looking deeper into it. I actually listed all the opponents she had had up to this point, from her first match with Red Velvet to what is documented in cagematch.net's most recent, Dulce Tormenta. And my findings were shocking, to say the least. Going through the entire list of everything, I have found that she has battled 20 people in her entire thing, in some cases multiple times, have been what I would call AEW jobbers. To define a jobber for AEW, here's how I go about it. Either they are constantly, not always, but constantly booked to lose, they never really win on television, nor do they last long in AEW. That is what I'm calling a jobber in AEW. That's a very wide margin, but it's a solid margin for what I'm talking about here. Most of Jade Cargill's matches have been against jobbers. Been against jobbers, low carters. Long before she was champion, she was battling jobbers more often than not. Battling low carters here and there. Had one-off three-way dance between her, Thunder Rosa, and and Nyla Rose, which was her biggest match up to date at that point. And no, I'm not going to consider the Cody vs. Shaq match her biggest match ever. No, 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 no. That would be ridiculous. She's a wrestler. I'm holding her to a standard here. And yes, I am vividly holding her to this standard. Looking through this, she is not being developed. She's battled in the low cards. She's battled the jobbers. And then on occasion, she's brought up to face a bigger name. But then she goes immediately from that bigger name right back down to a jobber low card status that she fights. And apparently she has worked with the same people more often than not. Her biggest amount of matches to date stands at three singles matches against the same people twice. That being three singles matches against Red Velvet, three singles matches against Sky Blue. She has had multiple other singles matches where she's battled someone at least twice. And that was against Willow Nightingale. She's battled Verda Vixen twice. She's battled Rekka Tehaka twice. And Rekka Tehaka isn't even getting the screen time anymore. It does seem that the lower carters are being kept from Jade more and more. Kind of to protect her. And protect them from Jade, apparently. Anna Jay faced her twice. Shortly after Jade won the TBS Championship, Anna Jay challenged her for the title. And what I saw was the worst promo that I think Jade ever did, where she literally was talking to Anna and then looked straight into the camera, literally went from flow on that. It was... Uh, I digress on that one, though. Anna Jay would challenge her on Dynamite and then would go to Double or Nothing to challenge her on that. I saw the tail end of that match and saw Anna Jay getting into proper position for Jade to hit her finisher off the ropes. Literally, she moved for that position. 
Revolution. Since that match, Anna J has not resurfaced for going after the title, which, based on the fact she's in the Jericho Appreciation Society, should be old enough telling for you. Yes, they both are would be heels based on that fact alone, but as AEW has shown, they don't care about having heel versus heel, face versus face, they literally disregard that altogether. So Anna J literally has not gone after the TBS championship since Double or Nothing. Julia Hart had one match with her, and hasn't tried going after it, despite the fact she's in the House of Black. Now you might say the House of Black is not really interested in titles, but I don't understand sure on that either. Aka, AQA. Well, I guess I can't fully guess on that one. It was her debut match in AEW against Jade. She signed, and then she walked away from the business altogether. So, I'm not going to go deep into that one, because literally she had only like a few matches on AEW television after that. I think I counted six. Yeah. Six matches in AEW after Battling Jade, and then she quit the business. Take what you will from that. She's wrestled the bunny once, which I think is all you have to hear about that one. Ty Conti, once. And then she went like, two matches against Marina Shafir. One, from what I remember reading when a match first happened, had to be heavily edited on Rampage, and then a squash match on Dynamite, I believe it was. Quick, quick matches on that. In the course of three months, she battled Athena twice tag team match, and in a singles match on pay-per-view, which lasted less than five minutes. And since that time, which was back in September, she hasn't battled anyone higher than Madison Rain. So take that for what you will. She's not even being put against the higher level cards. Lower carders are being kept from her. And she is only getting one-off matches with bigger names. She went from battling Athena to going right back to her matches against Willow, matches against Diamante, and then also going against Droppers. Various amounts of them. Velvet. I'm trying not to make this a video completely about Jade's wrestling career. But I'd hope to make that on one of her own, which I may very well win, dependent upon if I ever get enough people clamoring for that. I literally have the list in front of me right now. A few of these women have gained bigger fame and everything on the independent scene. Many of them have actually been in the business, developed their skills, and kept going left and right. A few people I've also seen say that they have been keeping her from having the bigger matches because they want to build up a whole kind of thing like that. I don't know how to even respond to that at times. Literally, look at Tony Khan. What in the man's booking history shows you that he has any level of restraint? He doesn't. If she looked good enough right now in the rain, Tony would have probably thrown her against a Karoshita Riho, even, and multiple other of the bigger names. There are more bigger names there. In terms of AEW bigger names, I'm not saying they're bigger in the professional wrestling world, but there are bigger names that Jade could be facing. She is actively being kept away from anyone above a lower card rank. I just realized that myself. Why is she not battle Riho? Why is Riho not going after her? Many people make the argument that Jade is a heel. That she is. Though AEW doesn't try working that she is just a heel. They try giving her almost a baby face aura at times. But yes. Why hasn't she battled Riho? Why hasn't she battled numerous other kind of... Higher on the ranks? Her booking is very deliberate. She's being kept away from the bigger names to try and keep her looking strong. She's not ready to step up. And if she's not ready to step up, why does she have a title? 
Like I said earlier in this video, it was obvious from how they booked the TBS Championship that they had big plans for it. That this was supposed to be the proper secondary title to the women's division. It was going to be the next thing for them to focus on. Fame, fortune, and whatnot. But, Jade wasn't ready to hold the belt when she got it. She's not progressing to the degree that she should be to be a champion. That she should be to carry a division. Booking is showing that left and right. Every single woman's champion that has been through AEW has had their matches with jobbers. Have had their matches with low carters, yes. But not to this various degree. Usually they are set against bigger names for the AEW roster anyway than this. Jade is more protected than even Charlotte Flair and WWE protected. Which is a lot. I mean, think about that. Seven years, she's held the title nearly 15 times. Or she's nearer on her father's record than she really should be in the course of seven years. That's another story, though. This was supposed to be a defense for the TBS Championship to be given a chance to actually be what it was intended to be. This is me now ranting and raving that the TBS Championship is suffering under Jade Cargill's reign. I have my own personal opinions on Jay Cargill as a person, as a wrestler, and everything like that. But the booking is being clear as day. She's not ready to carry a title. She's not ready to be a champion and make the division. The belt needs to be taken off her. It needs to be put on someone who could carry the division. Someone who can make this championship bigger than what Jade currently has the ability to do so. I'm not saying fire Jade. I'm saying give this title a chance to actually be a title. To actually be what the original tournament intended it to be. Jade can improve. I'm not saying she can't. She's come a long way since her first match. She actually can make her moves flow a little bit better. But she still has a long way to go. Constantly just giving her jobbers lower carders. And just making her... Literally, if people have said she's the female Goldberg, I don't think that's the case. There's an argument there to be had. Tony Khan uses the fans to fill in gaps in his logic, gaps in his booking, and gaps in everything he does. Why? Because he honestly probably doesn't realize there are gaps that need to be filled. And fans are all too ready to cover for him. The TBS Championship is not a prospect championship. Jade Cargill's being booked... And the TBS title is her fashion accessory along for the ride. It's time to change pace on the TBS Championship.